to figure out what all to do. I think we're <laughs> ready. <laughs> welcome, welcome to all of you who are in the chapel on this really windy day. We can hear creaks from above us and we trust that we're all going to stay safely where we are in our seats while the wind blows outside. Welcome to all of you who are watching in your rooms and welcome to each of you who will be watching in the coming days. We affirm that God is present with us and knits us together wherever and whenever we are. I have just two announcements before we continue in worship. A reminder that our Advent Bible study for healthcare and assisted living residents is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock here in the chapel. And next Wednesday, at this same time in this place, we will have our lessons and carols service that is usually on Christmas Eve morning. Because of the way that Christmas falls this year, we'll be celebrating during our normal chapel time rather than on Friday morning. As we move into worship, I just want to recognize that this week is the third week of Advent, the week in which we focus on joy which is designated by the pink candle. So we have three candles lit, two purple, and the joyful pink one. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It is a gift of God, and it is a thread that runs through Scripture. I think it is steadier than happiness, perhaps less connected to the events in our lives, Indeed, it was a search for lasting joy that finally drew C.S. Lewis to the Christian faith. Today, as we worship, let us lift up our hearts in praise and thanksgiving for the one who is the source of all joy. On your uh, papers, there is our call to worship from Isaiah 12. So if you would take your papers, I will read the light print, and if you respond with the dark print, we will continue in our worship. Surely God is our salvation. We will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is our strength and our might. God has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say on that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Let this be known in all the earth. Let us sing together number 377 in your hymnals, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Zephaniah 3, 14 to 17, and Philippians 4, 4 to 5. And they are on the back of your order of worship if you want to follow along. Zephaniah 3, 14 to 17. Sing, daughter Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. And from Philippians 4, 4 to 5. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Chapel Jill. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. It's good to see all of you here. I hope that you will stay inside today. Do not go outside. <laughs> when I came over from my office, it, which is at the Wellness Center Lakeside Building, the winds are blowing at 45 miles an hour and just about blew me over. So we don't need to be blown over today. <laughs> well, I have a sermon to share with you today that was actually prepared for two different audiences. So I prepared this for you, which of course I'm sharing today, but I also shared this sermon at Whitestone Mennonite Church on Sunday. So um, I wanted to explain this slide up here. It says, Dare to Imagine. At Whitestone and perhaps other churches in the area, they are focusing on the theme during Advent Dare to imagine what God is like. So one week they, they dared to imagine God's goodness. Um, a week before they were imagining what God's um, embrace would be like. And this week they asked me to speak on dare to imagine God's song. So let's see. This is a scripture that Chaplain Anita read to us. Uh, I just have a different version here. This is from um, the message, and I'll just hone in on this verse, Zephaniah 317. Jerusalem be told, don't be afraid, dear Zion. Don't despair. Your um, God is present among you, a strong warrior to save you. And God will calm you with his love and delight you with his song. So God is singing. God is singing over you and I, over the world and in the world. What do you think God's song might sound like? How do you imagine God's song to be? I think we're going to have a little fun exploring this together. Um, a, a little story. I have a friend here on campus at Showalter Villa who shared this story with me about a time when she was babysitting her grandson. And they were in the kitchen together having a snack. And he was sitting at a little tiny child's table and she pulled up a stool fairly close to him and was sitting there. And as they were eating their snack, she laid out two songbooks. Now, her little grandson was too young. He was three, almost four. He couldn't read. But as she would sing a song, when she, she would finish, she'd say, sing this one and point to the, the song book. I want this one, Grandma. So then she'd sing another one and sing another one. And then um, I'm going to read this about this experience from her own journal entry now, since she worded it so well. And somehow, gradually, as Ephraim, my grandson, Finished his snack, he got off his stool and slowly edged toward me. 
As I kept singing, he climbed up on my lap. Such a rare treat for me, because he has tended not to be a cuddly child, and even wouldn't let me wouldn't even let me comfort him when he was hurt. So she writes, I cherish this small and small event and can only surmise it was our many moments of sweet song that drew him into my lap. I think um, that little Ephraim, this three to four year old grandson, heard God's song through his grandmother. He heard that song of love and safety and joy as he sat on her lap. What a lovely image of God's song. Where else might we hear God's song? Maybe among children as they're playing and laughing. I know when the weather's nice, we can hear the children playing out here at the preschool, and it sounds like God is singing. Just so much joy. Maybe God's song sounds like right here when we were just singing joy, 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 <laughs> joy. Um, maybe that's God's song as we sing together. Well, I have some more interesting thoughts about maybe what God's song might sound like. Last, uh, well, actually now it would be two weeks ago by now, I heard a presentation at um, Bethel College through a Minnow Simons lecture series. It was just online, um, but it was by Jan Crable, who is a Grammy-nominated musician. So she plays organ, piano, harpsichord, and she also loves to teach about music and sound. So she started this presentation. I borrowed a few things from her, Jan Crable. She started her presentation with a singing bowl like this. She said that everything in this earth is vibrating like the singing bowl. So you and I have energy that's vibrating through the molecules like the singing bowl and making sound waves. She says that um, science shows that everything on earth vibrates and creates sound waves on some frequency, whether we can hear it with our naked ears or not. So, you know, this makes sense, right? Um, you and I each have our own sound. You can hear my voice, I can hear your voice. And we call that our sound signature. So Lance has a different sound signature than I do. This bowl has its own sound signature. The piano has its own sound signature. That, that makes sense. And so when our loved ones call, even before they say who it is on the telephone, we can recognize their sound signature. We can recognize their voices, right? So um, the speaker, Jan Crable, applies this also to all of creation. So um, not only do our bodies have their own sound signature, but also animals. And that makes sense too, right? Animals have their own sounds. Um, and their own energy, their own sound waves. So then it, Jan Crable took this concept a little farther by saying that even different areas on Earth have different sound signatures. For example, she visited this place called the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in South Central Colorado. And according to the National Park Service, um, that there can be singing noises in this place or booming noises, or cracking, or humming, or roaring. And this, these noises are nicknamed the Song of the Dunes. These happen when the sand shifts down the sides of the, 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 the face of the sound dunes, and those audible vibrations occur when the sand compresses the air and then creates those sounds. In addition, there are widespread reports from all around the world that people can hear a hum. Not everybody can hear this mysterious hum, but some can. We've heard about it in the United States, United Kingdom, New Zealand, and in Canada. And one of the places in the United States is Taos, New Mexico. Quite a few people have claimed they hear this low buzz I actually listened to it online and I decided not to play it for you because it sounds like a really loud mosquito and who wants to hear that? So, <laughs> But scientists don't know what this buzz is. 
the sound vibrations. I also learned through this presentation about Bernie Krauss. That's Bernie up there. He's an author of that book that you might see on the, the right-hand side, the author of the book, The Great Animal Orchestra. And I'd like to share an audio file of one of his soundscape recordings. Now, he, what he does is he takes microphones, good quality microphones, and puts them in a meadow or near a river or in special places forest and then he records that music or the sounds of the forest or the sounds of the meadow and they use those for scientific purposes to see how things are um, evolving and if there's any destruction in the climate so anyways i have a soundscape audio file for you to listen to and i want you to figure out where is this recorded what am I listening to? So we'll listen for maybe about 10 seconds or so. Um, all right, so think about what you're hearing. We'll have them turn that on. Shout it out, it's okay. If you feel brave enough. Anybody want to guess? At the church on Sunday morning, we had children sitting on the edge of their seats going, I know, I know, and shouting it out. It was so cute. Um, we heard maybe it's a, a rainforest or a meadow, or a little kid over here said a zoo. And nope, nope, and nope. <laughs> That's not. Any other guesses? A jungle that sounds so much like a jungle. Believe it or not, these sounds were recorded in an anthill. Isn't that fascinating? So see that little hole up there? Bernie Krause took, put a tiny little microphone all the way down in an ant colony and recorded the sounds of the ants doing their work. Who would have thought? I don't know if we could hear that. You know, it must have been a special microphone. I don't know if we could hear that with our own ears. It was at a different frequency, but this microphone could pick it up. And it sounds like music. My husband thought that the high notes were, was a pan flute. So, anyways, another um, thought is that even on a larger scale, our Earth, our home planet, has its own acoustic signature or sound signature. And of course, those sounds come from weather, the wind. They come from earthquakes and volcanoes. So our earth even puts off its own sound waves. And another space concept here, concept out in space. Um, back in 1977, you see Voyager 1 over here. NASA released Voyager 1 with a lot of instruments to play music out there. Kind of interesting, Jingle Bells was the first song out there in space. They played Jingle Bells, I'm not sure why, but, <laughs> but they also have recorded um, sounds on, from Voyager 1 from outer space. So I'm going to play a very short clip of um, a sound signature of our solar system. hear that a little bit yeah it's not quite as colorful or as exciting as an anthill but there are noises out in space that kind of if, if we could listen longer um, you could tell there's some patterns and and it, it kind of lilts lil, lil, like music is that the right word did you know there are songs in space too God created everything to sing whoops we don't need to hear that again it reminds me of Psalm 19, 1 through 4. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. Their message has gone throughout the earth. Their words through all the world. All creation is singing. God's song is all around us. In fact, God is all around us. 
Many scriptures in the Bible confirm this reality that God is with us. Let's look at the scriptures that Chaplain, Chaplain Anita read, two of them, and I'll add Philippians down here. Zephaniah 3, 15 through 17 says, The Lord your God is with you. Isaiah 12, 6, For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And then another one, Philippians 4, 5, The Lord is near. God is in our midst. God isn't just up there in heaven somewhere. God is right here, as close as, as to us as a grandmother's lap, as close to us as an anthill. <laughs> These scriptures also tell us something else. Am I hearing some noise? Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, raining. It's raining. <gasps> Praise the Lord. Oh, it's raining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're hearing God's song through the thunder and the rain. Oh, I love it. Perfect. <laughs> Me too. That's awesome. Um, okay, what was I saying? Oh, yes, God is as closest to us as a grandmother's lap or an anthill or the thunder and the rain. These scriptures tell us something else, too. They're linked. God's presence is linked hand in hand with something else. So we have the Lord your God is with you, and he rejoices over you with singing. Let's see in this one what it's linked with, God's presence. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. So God is there in their midst, and they are singing aloud, and there's joy. And then in Philippians, the Lord is near, and what's happening? Rejoice. We can rejoice because the Lord is near. So what goes hand in hand with God's presence? Rejoicing, singing, and joy. Psalm 16 says it so well. You make known to me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. So I'd like for us to take just a few minutes to think about what brings us joy. And I'll just have you think about it. You don't need to share out loud. <clears throat> but when do you feel joy? Are you with someone in particular? Are you doing some special activity? Or maybe in the past, can you remember or recall a special time when you experienced a lot of joy? <clears throat> For me, I am happy when, and feel joyful when I'm in my kitchen and I'm baking bread. I just talked to Faith about this the other day. I love to bake bread. Um, I also feel joyful when I'm outside, when the weather's nice, of course. I'm joyful <laughs> with the rain. You're joyful right now with the rain, yes, yes. I'm sure uh, when we're talk, going to talk about this tomorrow, Yes. when uh, Mary and Elizabeth meet. Together. Yes, you're thinking ahead, so for our Bible study tomorrow, we're going to be reading the, the scriptures about how Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And when Mary um, came into the presence of Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby, John the Baptist, that we knew later, leapt for joy. Yes. When I offered this question at Whitestone, again, the children were so excited they wanted to hold the microphone and say what brought them joy. So I heard things like, my cat, or my parents, or playing sports. So for the children, those are some things that brought them joy. This morning I asked this during a Bible study, and by far, the most common answer was my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren or looking forward to gathering with family. Of course, we have people who, for whom music brings a lot of joy. I think of Anne, too, as she loves to play violin. Okay, so if this is true, um, that God is indeed with us when we experience joy, um, then... Actually, I said that wrong and I kind of messed up, but that's okay. It's true that God is indeed with us and in God's presence is fullness of joy. Then we can conclude that when we are experiencing joy, that is God. As I said, God isn't just far away where we have to strain and pray hard to reach God. No, God is here in this messy, holy sanctuary of life. God is in our midst. 
In this difficult world where we experience a lot of challenges, personally and collectively, I'm learning the importance of receiving these little gifts of joy. It's so easy for me to get caught up in discouragement, especially when I watch the news um, and see all the suffering and the division in our world. And it's easy to get bogged down in grief and sadness in different situations in our lives. But I propose today that we work at retraining our brain to focus more on God's presence right here with us. Retraining our brain to pay attention to the joy that comes each day. Maybe while we're lying in bed getting ready to get up, we can think about what is it going to be today that's going to bring us just a little bit of joy. Because there are little moments of joy, even in the midst of suffering and sadness and grief. We still have joy. They, they're intertwined. So when those moments of joy happen, I can remind myself, hey, this is God right here, and say, thank you, God, for your presence, or thank you for this gift. I want to be fully present for that present. <laughs> So you might be thinking, okay, Jill, this is a lovely concept, but you know what? There's so much suffering. There's so much suffering in the world. There's so much suffering here. Isn't focusing on joy kind of like burying your head in the sand? Isn't it ignoring all that's going on around us? And I struggle with this question, I have to admit. Um, I appreciate how Clara works, the professor at Wesley, she's a professor at Wesley Theological School in Washington, D.C. She responds to this, is, sorry, is rejoicing selfish? She says, in this season of Advent, in a time of waiting and longing, we read the exhortation to rejoice. Rejoicing does not negate or turn a blind eye to despair. Rejoicing does not somehow make the suffering go away or minimize injustice. Rather, rejoicing acknowledges that we are serving the one and only God who can rectify the wrongs, who can and has stood in solidarity with the oppressed. Rejoicing in the face of gross injustice is a courageous act, a theological hope lived out in the present that stems from a vision of God's shalom, a shalom so glorious that it is transforming and claiming life, even in the present. I believe God calls us each to tune our hearts to the joy that is here, tune our hearts to God's shalom and peace and joy. And as we do that, we're claiming life and we're trusting in God to make all things right. So, how do we tune our hearts to joy? Well, I'm working on it. <laughs> and maybe you might want to work on it too. Um, I want to be, have it as an intention. When I get up in the morning, I want to say, God, will you help me pay attention to your presence today? Or will you help me um, tune my heart to your joy? So you can ask God's Spirit to help you and remind you. And as you go about your day, pay attention. What is bringing you joy? And when you have that warm feeling of happiness or contentedness or this um, yes in your heart and body and mind, make a note. Yes, that's God with me, Emmanuel. Some people at the end of the day, and I like to do this, but oftentimes I forget, when I'm lying in bed, I want to think about my day and say, where did I find joy today? And just briefly do a quick scan of my day, and when I find that joyful moment, stop and remember. And let that joy fill me again and be grateful to God. Sometimes uh, people like to have a, a friend that helps them hold them accountable. And so if you, if you like to use your cell phones or email, you could call us text or email or even call a friend and just briefly tell each other what brought you joy that day. I encourage parents um, at the church when they have family dinner time, you could ask, what was your favorite part of today or what made you laugh today? 
or when they tuck their kids into bed, they can ask those questions. And another option for those of you who uh, like to journal or write, some people like to, to write those journals, um, write the joyful things in their journals. The woman that I told about, the grandmother whose grandson climbed in her lap, she has a special journal just for joyful things. And she'll, she'll write joyful things down, and then she goes back and recalls those, remembers those, and um, relives the joyful experience. Well, those are just some suggestions. Um, perhaps you'll have some other ways to uh, think about joy in the coming days. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the rain. We pray for protection over all the people who are out and about in this wind. We thank you that you are singing over us that you are with us in the joyful moments, and of course, you are with us in those difficult, sad, grieving moments as well. We thank you that you are joy and that you will help tune us into your joy, to the frequency of your heartbeat, and we can trust in you to make all things right. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The song we're going to sing is Joy of the Lord, 1 and 4. Joy of the Lord, 1 and 4. as we forgive our debtors. Let's pray together. Oh God, our joy, we come to you with confidence, knowing that you will receive and will tend to all that we bring to you. On this day, we thank you for the songs of your good creation, for each created being, for the sounds of the earth, for the sounds of space, for the sounds of your universe that call us to you. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, God with us, whose birth we will celebrate next week, and who leads us to life both now and forever lasting. We thank you for your presence with us in all times and all places. Today we lift up the family of Jake Berkey. We thank you that Jake is now safe and whole and seeing you face to face. 
And we ask, please, that you now hold Lois and all of their family in your care. Surround them with the knowledge of your presence with them as they journey into this season of grief. O oh God, in this Advent season, draw us to yourself so that we may see you and rejoice in you and live your way of justice in this world. We pray together using the words that your Son, Jesus, taught to us. Our Father, Father who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joy to the World, 171. Go in peace. 